Recently, nilagay ang Metro Manila and other major urban centers sa Pilipinas under modified enhanced community quarantine. Ang dahilan, a disturbing surge in COVID-19 cases which has made the Philippines the so-called hotspot in Southeast Asia. In fact, by latest measures, worst case sa buong East Asia ang Pilipinas. At the same time, alam natin, hindi rin pwede forever itong enhanced community quarantine or modified version of that dahil nag-hemorrhage na po yung economy natin. So ang tanong, what will come after the expiration of the latest round of modified enhanced community quarantine? Alam natin, earlier this year, marami nagdadabate kung when and how and how long should lockdowns be imposed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic originating from China. Ang pinakaunang bansa na nagsimula, of course, was China itself by shutting down not only Wuhan, a major city or the Detroit of China, but the entire Hubei province. But many countries resisted and dragged their foot on imposing lockdowns way into the year dahil nga napakamahal ng lockdowns and it could be politically explosive. At the same time, many governments, including President Duterte, have been accused of not acting early enough and not imposing strict preventative measures January pa lang of this year. So my three different counter-proposals to a strict lockdown. The first proposal was the very controversial hypothesis of herd immunity. Ang idea dyan is, let the virus run its course and as more people get infected, the strain of virus that is least deadly but most transmissible will be the one that will just circulate among the population and the population over time will develop immunity. Now, in early March of this year, leading experts like Sir Patrick Valance of United Kingdom actually suggested that the herd immunity will work. But other infectious diseases experts said that the risk is too high. Hundreds of thousands of people could die, as we have seen already in the case of the United States, in spite of partial lockdowns across the country. The number two option was demographic isolation. Well, alam natin yung COVID-19 virus has been generally more dangerous for people in the older cohorts and people of specific demographic background. So the suggestion of some leaders like Donald Trump earlier this year was, wag na natin i-lock down yung buong economy, isolate na lang natin yung mga specific vulnerable demographics na yan. And this is because for President Trump, napakamahalaga yung ekonomiya. Ayon kay President Trump, we cannot allow the cure to be worse than the problem itself because lockdowns will create a lot of socioeconomic troubles. And some would say the massive protests and riots across America could be also related to the effects of the lockdown on the U.S. society. Okay, the third option was so-called targeted or mini lockdowns dun lang sa mga areas that are really hot spots. This way, you don't have to shut down the entire city or entire provinces and regions or entire country. And the Philippines has already has had one of the strictest and longest lockdowns in the world. So baka hindi na natin ma-afford for having more extended lockdowns, whether modified or not. At ito yung mukhang sinasuggest ng ating gobyerno after August 18. Ayon sa Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere, our safeguard if and when the government will decide that we will be easing out on these restrictions would be the granular lockdowns that we are now guiding LGUs with. Ayon sa DOH, we have already gained ground. So medyo na kontrol natin yung situation so we can have a much more targeted and granular approach. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque also confirmed this that we're moving towards localized granular lockdowns. So we have to learn a lot of acronyms. Hindi lang MCQ or MECQ. We're also going to look at localized and granular lockdowns as the way forward. Clearly, hindi sapat yung lockdowns na nangyari dito dahil they were not very effectively enforced. And just another two weeks of that in August perhaps would not be really sufficient. But moving forward, even with the granular localized version, we have to make sure that we meet certain requirements para maging effective ito. We're looking at the three T's of testing, tracing, and treating. So, dapat effective yung mass testing and contact tracing natin para sigurado yun natin na hindi magkaroon ng spillover from specific barangays or districts na magka-quarantine or lockdown. Sigurado yun din natin na we provide proper treatment for those who need it para we bring down fatality rates and we bring down serious health problems for the victims of COVID-19. 
but we also have to make sure that we provide social amelioration and other kinds of coping mechanism para hindi masyado mahirapan itong mga barangays or districts which will be locked down in a targeted, granular, and localized manner. Here we are. Tough times call for creative solutions. So hindi effective yung herd immunity dahil napaka-delikado. Hindi rin pwede yung kay Donald Trump na demographic isolation because COVID-19 is also targeting healthy and young cohorts. So among the best alternative we have to strict lockdowns that hemorrhage our economy is localized and granular lockdowns. Ako po si Richard Hedarian. Stand with us. Stand for truth.